Hello everyone, this is Roland, Pastor Roland. Today I want to talk about health, part three. I had two previous videos about health, I want to make another one. Health is an issue that a lot of people are dealing with. But let's talk about uh, why we have health problems in the first place. You see, the basis of our health problems, okay, two things. Number one, um, we're not living properly. We, have, we don't have wisdom. Okay? We don't have wisdom, so we make a lot of mistakes. We eat the wrong food, hang out with the wrong people. We abuse our bodies in various ways for pleasure or out of anger. Um, rushing around a angrily or ambitiously, see, resentfully. And so our, it takes a, a, a toll on our bodies. So that's the first thing. Then the second thing is that when things start to go wrong, again, we don't have wisdom. And uh, we're misled by people who tell us the wrong things, lead us astray. And the other problem is we're looking for symptom relief. See, we're rather than sitting down, look, um, a couple of years ago, I had uh, what a lot of people would consider to be a really, really uh, major issue. And instead of uh, rushing to look for symptom relief, pain relief, aspirins, you know, analgesics and things like that, or rushing, rushing, rushing for a quick um, relief of some sort. I uh, watched it. I watched it. And I asked myself, why? Okay. So it led to a lot of research and a huge amount of learning and some changes. Okay. Um, but it took a lot of... Uh, um, and soul searching, okay. And I'm still looking at, okay. I I can see two things. I can see number one, um, wasn't getting quite the right um, nutrients and so on. Number two, wrong advice. Okay. Wrong advice out there in the world. And number three. It has something to do with the way I led my life a long time ago. A long time ago, when I was young, I was, like a lot of people, I was angry. Okay, angry at my mom, angry at my dad, so on. And resentful. Okay, and uh, ambitious, not so much ambitious, but um, uh, in a sense trying to prove something you know, that sort of thing, like a lot of young people. Well, that took its toll, okay? So a lifetime of wrong living, wrong advice, see, wrong eating, <laughs> they all take their toll. And then when issues arise, see, uh, it can, uh, is when issues arise, they can be a very good thing. So, for example, for me, it was a very, very good thing. Because first of all, I learned a lot, which one day I will share with with everyone what I learned. And number two, um, it it was uh, um, it was just good in a lot of ways, and I learned a huge amount. But if the person um, doesn't make changes, gets the wrong advice, um, is looking for symptom relief, or worse yet, resents what went wrong. See, that's another mistake we make. First, we don't have wisdom. Second, we live wrongly. Thirdly, we get the wrong advice. Then we don't have wisdom. And then the other thing is we don't have love. We don't have love for other people. It's, see, we resent other people. We hate them. We hate them. See, we're impatient with them. I was driving down the road today. And I pulled, uh, my son was with me, and we pulled out of the uh, golf course. We had gone to the golf course to uh, hit a few balls at the driving range. It was a nice sunny day. 
and I pulled out and I was temporarily uh, going not really really fast and the person there was a person behind me who was also pulling out I had seen him earlier there with his uh, little son like five years old and he went around me and it, he raced his engine it's amazing he didn't destroy his engine he raced he w revved up so uh, high the engine so high just to get around me in in an angry hateful impatient way see so what's going to happen to him nothing good unless he changes his way nothing good is going to happen it's going to lead to health problems relationship problems with his wife his son won't respect him his son will hate him his son will be disappointed in him and then his son will have issues you see so a lot of times you can look at someone and within a few seconds you 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 see all you see it you can see in a few seconds the story of their life okay if he doesn't change his ways of course if he changes his ways has a change of heart about it, then it could be see what I mean he can be okay and his son can be okay too if he doesn't resent his father see that's the secret a lot of us had parents that weren't so good or we had parents that were decent halfway decent but they made some mistakes and we resented them the secret is first of all if you don't resent your parents in the first place then you it's really good but if you do resent your parents which a lot of kids do resent their father for not being there for them resent their mom for being a nag or a witch or uh, meddling or whatever whatever the case may be okay screaming at them or setting them up to fail or hating their father and teaching the child to hate the father you know all that stuff the usual um, abandoning the child to preschool and daycare to the bullies abandoning the child to school see all the usual things okay if you don't if you did resent your parents and then you don't resent them anymore you stop resenting them then you can also be okay you will have traumas there will be some damage and there will be some baggage but that can also be overcome uh, with the good Lord's help okay um, but, but where was I oh yes so I said our problem remember I began by saying we don't have wisdom then we have wrong advice people around us don't have understanding they give us the wrong advice either because they just don't know or because they deliberately give us the wrong advice okay so for money perhaps see like unnecessary operations uh, or just not caring enough they don't care enough so they just uh, give some advice that will that will do Okay. Now, um, so where was I? Oh, yes. Yeah, so we don't have wisdom. We don't have understand. We get the wrong advice. We, we then we resent our. It's okay. Then the next problem is that we don't have love. I said we don't have love for other people. We re, you resent your husband. Women resent their. They hate their husband. Okay. Husbands hate their resent their wives. See, I'm using the terms interchangeably because resentment is a little bit of hate. That's what it is. And parents are impatient with their children. What is impatience? It's hate. It's a selfish sort of a hate. And when children see the face of impatience deep down in their heart, they they know that the parent doesn't love them. No matter how many toys the parent gives them, no matter what how nice a school the parent sends them to all that stuff see no child wants to hate the parent so of course the child won't consciously won't realize it but deep down deep down it causes a trauma okay our lives are composed of trauma which I hope I can get to I might be able to get to it in this uh, video I hope maybe the next one so we don't have wisdom and we don't have love we hate other people we resent them so no wonder our nerves are you know on edge our blood vessels are constricted and so on 
is we're full of hate, not love. Okay, so then what happens then when, when symptoms arise? Our wrong living and our hatefulness and our resentment and our impatience. The chickens come home to roost, as my mother used to say. Then all of a sudden there are issues with a person's body and then what does the person do? He resents his own body, resents the symptoms, resents the body, looks for a quick fix, symptom relief, see? Or going to someone, do something, do something, do something, the person says. Well, then the, it's, it, they're practically begging somebody to do something, so then they do something, and then sometimes that something makes it worse. <laughs> They'd be better off if they hadn't done some extreme thing, see? So there's no love for our body. And so when our body becomes, but our body is like a, like a, sometimes it's like a child, your soul. See, you should be the good parent to the body. Body cries out. Pa what is pain but crying out for saying something's wrong? Your body says something's wrong. And what does your soul do? What do you do? You resent it. You hate it. It's interfering with uh, my golf game. It's interfering with work. It makes me feel bad, so I hate it. See, a lot of parents, they hate their kids, too. See, because their kids interfere with their selfish uh, whatever they want to do. You get the idea. So what can we say, then? If people are full of hate, resentment, and uh, they're prideful, people are prideful, then uh, what can I say? But there are some people who are resentful and prideful and so on, but at a certain point, see, they begin to see that they're wrong, and then they cry out for real answers. All right, so now let's continue with uh, our talking about health. Let's go back to how it all kind of began a long time ago. You know, it begins with trauma. The, the whole human race was traumatized at the very beginning. And to this day, we have a memory of the trauma in the Garden of Eden. When you look at uh, the, the problems that men and women have, for example, you know, if you look at animals, bunny rabbits, squirrels, and... Um, giraffes and so on, they don't, they don't have uh, the, the fighting and the divorces and the enmity between uh, them that we do. No. Why, why, why would humans, we're supposed to be in the wisest of all, and yet there we are fighting like cats and dogs. What's, what's going on? Well, it's because we don't have understanding there either. Okay. But the beginning of the human race, Adam was ambitious, he fell through Eve to the temptation, he went for it, and he ate the forbidden food which he was not supposed to, he doubted God, did the wrong thing, they got booted out of paradise, and then Adam fell from being, uh, from, he could have lived forever, he could have lived forever in paradise, both his soul and body, his body could have lived forever on this earth. It was different then. Everything has changed. When Adam fell, everything began to change. And Adam changed too. So he had to die. So he had to eat, to live. He had to work by the sweat of his brow. And then he, uh, he would die. Which is uh, the legacy that he leaves to all of us. Because we are in the lineage of Adam and Eve. But for some of us, there burns a hope. It burns a hope in our heart for um, an escape clause, if you will. And there is one, thanks to Christ and what he did. See, he's the new Adam. It says it in the Old Testament. He's the new Adam. He's the son of God, of course. Jesus is the son of God, the only begotten son of God. He's also the new Adam. He's like the first of a new race. Now human beings. You know, it's kind of funny. You look at, you hear people talk about aliens and all that kind of stuff, you know? Um, and yet they, they, 
the the, the beautiful the beauty of of uh, and the mystery and the excitement of what God has prepared for people is is uh, is so astounding, far more astounding than any of this other stuff. So God, so Christ, literally came, and because of what He did, okay, and He did a lot of things. I'm not going to talk about it all here, but I would just say in passing. See, I have to say some of these things along the way because I have to put a little content in here. You should read my books. I always tell you to read my books because here on this little video I can give you like five minutes. Okay, you need more. You need there's a lot more in my books which I've written. Hundreds and hundreds of pages of insights. Okay, but what did Christ do? Well, first of all, he was the perfect sacrifice. The shedding of his blood, of innocent blood. Uh, he led the perfect life. He never failed. See, he never doubted God. He never failed. How many of you women would like to have a man like that? Who never failed. See, but we men, all of us, myself included, we all fail and fail and fail. But some of us, thankfully, don't want to fail. We wish we what we see that our wives and children suffer for our failing. We cry out for answers. Okay, real answers. He never failed. He was a perfect sacrifice. It was acceptable unto the Father. For some reason, there has to be a shedding of blood for the remission of sins. And once and for all, his was perfect sacrifice. Okay? He blessed the ground where his blood fell upon the ground. He blessed the ground. Remember that the ground had been cursed because of what Adam did? Now it was blessed. See? And the other thing he did, it's a kind of a legal thing, he took his body back. I mean, oh no, I'm getting a step ahead of myself. Um, they killed an innocent man. The Pharisees, the leaders of the day. See, the Pharisees, they're still around today, the Pharisees and the set, the letter of the law people. The, le the cruel letter of the law people. You find them all over there. And of course, the uh, authorities of the day didn't like him because what he was—he would—he was going to free everybody, give them understanding, see, make them happy and healthy and whole and self-reliant. They wouldn't need, see, to, they wouldn't need all their uh, helpers. They wouldn't need all their, uh, yeah, help, human help, which more often hurts than it helps. So he did that, and so therefore, since the um, the devil took someone who didn't belong to him, see, now the devil is uh, legally messed up, which is good. It's good that he's messed up. And um, the other thing is that uh, Christ then took his body back. A lot of people miss that point. He took his body back. He died, and he took his body back send it into heaven. Okay? So these are all wonderful, remarkable things. Okay? So he was the pace setter. He was the main man. But you have to, so you, so for those who really follow him, not those who just pretend to follow him, but those who really find, see, the real thing, then he is their uh, leader and they become like him. No, they don't become gods. No, they don't become gods. But they become, um, they be, they're in the process of, be, of being perfected by him. Okay. They're in the process of being perfected. So you need to get that started. You need to get that ball rolling where you're in the process of being perfected. So instead of getting worse, which is what you are now, getting worse, becoming more imperfect, you need to start to become perfect. So salvation is both uh, instantaneous and drawn out over time. At a certain point in time, and you, uh, no one knows when it will be. It's a mystery. I can't tell you. It has something to do with when the soul is ready, when the person is ready, when they're sincere, and 
when go, and, and if they're fortunate enough for God to um, choose them, see, none can come to me unless my Father draw them, Jesus said. It's a hard teaching for a lot of people, but you don't choose Christ. You don't choose God. He chooses you. See, you cry out in sackcloth and ashes and rend your clothes and cry out, see, over the hateful, phony, pretentious thing that you have become, okay? So now you see, um, now you see that. So the trauma at the beginning of the human race in the Garden of Eden involved food. And don't we have food problems today? Substance problems, food problems. It involved the spoken word. Eve spoke to Adam. She spoke the what words that the serpent had told her about. So there was that. And um, uh, there was the man. See, there was the woman. So all of those, we've all been traumatized by those. Okay? So now you know what life is about. You have to... Um, you have to find the secret to life, and then it's a school where you learn. See, learn to be not selfish. That's what marriage is. Marriage is not for getting your needs met or for selfish pleasure taking. Marriage is to learn to be unselfish. See, and to be with a man or with a woman, and learn to be more forgiving. Learn to be patient. See, okay. So, so there's all of that. So when it comes to our bodies, we uh, so there's the, the trauma at the beginning of the human race, which we inherit, which has to be undone. See, Christ undid all of those. That was the purpose of the Last Supper. He undid the food trauma. Okay, I'm just giving you some little clues here. He undid the food trauma. He said, those who eat in remembrance of me, in other words, those who are aware and eat with awareness and mindfulness, remembering him, it changes the way they eat. Okay, it changes the effect of food on them. Um, but now in our own lives, and I'm going to have to do this in the next video, we have traumas, and we're going all the way back to childhood, when our parents were impatient, when they weren't there for us, when they left us, abandoned us through cruel babysitters and things like that. Traumas, traumas, they're buried down there. And those traumas um, play a part in our health problems, buried traumas. Traumatized our mind, traumatized our body. And so that's why I recommend that you get the meditation that I have so you can come up in awareness, find the inner light, become centered, and begin to be able to observe things without overreacting to what you see. To stand back and observe so that what's down there can surface. Okay? Come out of hiding. You've been hiding it and repressing it so long. And why? Because you, you haven't been able to deal with it on your own. But if you have the light, if you have God's light with you, see, then you're not walking alone. Remember that beautiful song, You'll Never Walk Alone. When you walk through the night, hold your head up high. Remember that? There's a beautiful song. It's from a nice movie, I think. Don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the night is a, is a golden light or something like that. And the sweet silver song of the lark. Well, oh, it's a beautiful song. You should look it up on the internet, YouTube or something. You'll never walk alone. Okay, well, you'll never walk alone if you have Jesus. If you have God. So find Jesus. Find God. Don't look to other people. Don't look to them. Look within. My name is Pastor Roland.